hydrofluorocarbons as I told you are causing ozone holes I said. Now let's see what are the different things in this. What is the first one basically C7F16 this is called perfluoro heptane perfluoro heptane what is it used for this is basically used for deacidification okay let me write that perfluoro heptane is used for deacidification of paper and that is the yeah, next one cf2 cl2 i told you this is causing um, ozone depletion by causing ozone holes why basically this is an halogenated hydrocarbon and here this chlorine whatever is there that undergoes free radical mechanism and that free radical is going to cause ozone depletion right done next comes third one C6H6Cl6 what is this called this is called lindane and this is also called gemaxin or this is also called benzene hexachloride this is called benzene hexachloride right benzene because benzene is here c6h6 hexa is 6 and chloride is here now last one let us see c6f6 the fourth one c6f6 is called hexa fluoro benzene where is it used basically this is used in as a solvent in photochemical reactions solvent in photochemical reactions done so now what is the answer correct answer now as we know free uh, freons or chlorofluorocarbons are going to deplete stratosphere why because they are going to they have chlorine atoms which undergo free radical mechanism very fast free radicals they're going to form free radicals and which are going to or cause ozone holes or ozone depletion so the correct answer is c f2 cl2 which will cause stratosphere depletion right. now let's come back and do one more set of questions student this is again a great uh, <coughs> 11th question let's see i'm trying to do different varieties of questions of different different patterns so please go through don't just assume the questions are because these are all hand-picked questions very very important questions for your neat examination right so let's see this here <coughs> what do they give us the heat of dissociation of benzene in an is an isolated gaseous atom okay in an isolated gaseous atom or is isolated gaseous atom is 5335 kilojoules per mole the bond energies of carbon C C single C single bond C C double bond C and C H bonds are given here. Magnitude of resonance energy of benzene. I need to find the magnitude of resonance energy of benzene. So basically, first we have to calculate the expected bond dissociation enthalpy of benzene. That is what is important, right? Expected bond dissociation and enthalpy of benzene. So uh, here. The formula for calculating this or doing this is 3 into delta H, 3 bonds isn't it, plus 3 into C double bond C plus 6 into delta H C single bond C. Right? So now this is what expected bond is a session value now let us calculate now calculated value what is calculated value 3 into how much is for C is a single bond C 347.3 for next one is double bond C is 3 into 615 next one is 3 in oh sorry 6 into 416.2 now when I do this I get an answer of 5000 384.1 what is resonance energy now because they have asked me to calculate resonance energy isn't it no resonance energy is expected value this is expected value isn't it this is expected this is calculated so resonance energy is expected value 
minus calculated value. How much is expected value? 53. No, expected value they've given me here. Yeah. 5335 uh, five, minus calculated value is 5384. Correct? Fine. So here, after uh, subtracting this, I get an answer of minus 49.1 kilojoules per mole. So the correct answer is 49.1 kilojoules per mole. So resonance energy is always expected value minus the calculated value hope this is clear students now let's come back and do the next question right so let's see this question uh, the simplest question again metallurgy question here what did he give us the most abundant metal okay the most abundant metal in earth's crust so here the question this is easy question but most of the students get it wrong why i'll tell you so most abundant metal basically <coughs> most abundant and abundant uh, metal and third most abundant element most abundant metal and third most abundant element on earth's crust earth's crust what is it it is aluminium remember this aluminium why because aluminium constitutes 8% by weight on the whole of earth's solid surface in it constitutes 8% then oxygen is 46.6 silicon how much is it it is basically 8.09 iron is 5% okay so most abundant metal and the third most abundant element is aluminium on the earth's crust let's come back and do next question now let's come back and solve the set 9 questions students. <coughs> so here, what is this question? Let's read. They are given here, which of the following compounds display geometrical isomerism? So basically first important thing what should you remember? For something to exhibit geometrical isomerism, what is the requirement? Requirement is you have to or the compound should have two different electron density group attached to them important again for a compound to exhibit geometrical isomerism the compound should have compound should have two different electron density group attached to them electron density group attached to them this is the most important thing so if there are two different electron density group those only will show geometrical isomers now let's come back and see here do we have two different uh, electron density groups only br wrong isn't it it will not show here br2 is present on the same carbon then also it will not show here you have cl and you have br on two different carbons yes this is going to show i told you isn't it compound should have two different electron density groups attached to them this carbon has cl this carbon has bromine so 100 percent this will show now here same bromine atom is attached to the same carbon here chlorine is attached to the same carbon not like that isn't it so two different I means here just like this this shall have chlorine and this will have bromine then only you can show geometric isomerism that is cis and trans isomerism done let's come back and see the next question now this is an chemistry in everyday life question right let's see this which of the following is not an antibiotic right so not an antibiotic we said first of all <laughs> let's see one after the other <coughs> sorry one after the other what is the mode of action of all these now what is tetracycline basically tetracycline it is an antibiotic they said which is not an antibiotic first we will write everything and then we'll see it is an antibiotic where where is this used basically this is used as protein synthesis inhibitor protein synthesis inhibitors done right now next one let's see neomycin Neomycin, what is its mode of action? Neomycin is bactericidal in nature. Bactericidal means what does it do? It's going to inhibit bacterial protein synthesis. So inhibits bacterial 
protein synthesis okay done now next is carbomycin what is carbomycin basically carbomycin is again an antibiotic it is an antibiotic where am where am i using this where do we use this this is used to inhibit the growth of gram positive bacteria we have two varieties of bacteria isn't it gram negative and gram positive right so here this is going to inhibit means it will inhibit which grow growth of which one it will inhibit gram positive bacteria now all our antibiotics what is the leftover one we have last one that is cyclohexane 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 as we know this is an alkane right so now the answer we have got the answer which of the following is not an antibiotic cyclohexane is not an antibiotic remaining all three are antibiotics in nature now let's see the next question let me turn the page and go with this right so uh, let me come back and do next question easiest question this is so in the next question let's read this an acid solution of 0.005 molar has a ph of 5 the degree of ionization of acid is what so basically same question similar question i've already done <coughs> what do we what should we calculate degree of ionization what is degree of ionization alpha what is the formula of alpha there's nothing but concentration of h plus by the concentration right now h plus value what do they give us here we have uh, we have got 0 0.005 molar has a ph of 5 ph is given so basically for an acid h plus concentration is equal to 10 raised per of minus means ph but it, the base 10 isn't it which is equal to 10 how much is the ph value here minus 5 now let us substitute in this formula alpha is equal to 10 raised to the power of minus 5. How much is the concentration given? 0 0.005. When I solve this, I get an answer of 0.2 into 10 raised to the power of minus 2. Right? So, simplest thing, I think I have already done this question already earlier. So, the answer here, you hope you understand this. <coughs> we, we know this formula, isn't it? So, 0.2. So, the correct answer is 0.2. Done? Yeah. Now, let's come back into one more question.